The bells have chimed. It's time for church. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is the day God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to see all of you this morning. I welcome each of you, no matter who you are, no matter whether you're here in person or you're watching online, no matter if this is your first time here or your thousandth time here, and no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, and it's good to see all of you. So. I pray that our time this morning is uplifting as we worship God together, as we share communion together, as we pray together, as we maybe play a little bingo and have some food together. It'll just be a wonderful day. So if you can sign the red welcome folder so that we know that you're here, that would be great. And because we are doing communion today, I would encourage you to grab your communion elements if you uh, didn't already. Uh, Those are back on the table uh, as you walk into the sanctuary. So if you need to grab that uh, sometime before that part of the service, uh, please do so. Also, happy Grandparents Day to all grandparents out there. So I uh, hope, hope you're having a good day and you can see your grandkids maybe today or sometime soon and be celebrated as grandparents. Again, stay for uh, bingo after service and the church picnic. I want to give a special thanks to Don and Peggy, Peggy Truckenbrod for providing the meat for the uh, picnic today. And thank you to all those who brought salads or vegetables or desserts. I know that the church picnic is going to be wonderful because no matter what kind of food we have here at the church, it is blessed by the Holy Spirit and it is delicious. So uh, we, I have no, no doubts about that. So please, please come and stay for that. And uh, looking forward to next Sunday, we have a special... <laughs> no, 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 no. We have a special presentation. I don't, we don't want to call it a, a sermon or whatever, but uh, Susie Parsons is going to present a special spiritual message next week. So please come next Sunday and worship with us and hear what Susie has to say about the Lord's Prayer. And I think Kathy Cato has an announcement, so I will pass it over to her, and I'll keep talking until she's up here, and she's good. Good morning, everybody. Um, We're getting ready for a trunk or treat. It's that time of year already. It's going to be the 27th of October from 4 to 6 p.m. down in the hopefully down in the fellowship hall and outside. Um, we, are, we need about two or three more trunks. Most of the people that signed up last year are going to be doing it again this year. So if you're interested, please talk to me. The biggest thing I stress this year is because last year it was gonna be 30 degrees and we were gonna be inside till the plumbing um, broke. Make sure that your trunk design is mobile enough to bring inside so we can set them up inside too since we can't move the cars inside. Also on the back um, table is the list for bringing soups, chicken, chicken noodle or chili, and the supply list that we need on there, and also the volunteer list. We're doing really well with candy selections because we've been able to store most of the candy that we had last year. So we have 9,000 to start with. We need about 4,000 more to um, get to that 13,000. So any questions, see me downstairs during the picnic and I'm doing bingo. So otherwise, just catch me at some time. Thanks. Thank you, Kathy. I do have one uh, Thanksgiving to pass along to you. Shirley Spencer wanted to uh, thank everybody who gave uh, sympathy cards or condolences and hugs uh, upon the death of her sister, Evelyn Huff. So just wanted, uh, Shirley wanted me to pass that along to all of you. and. And thank you for, for, your, for your condolences and sympathies. Are there any other announcements for the good of the fellowship? Square dancing starts next Sunday night. All right. If you didn't hear... 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Square dancing down in Fellowship Hall, 7 o'clock. Be there and be square. <laughs> Does that work? Well enough, maybe. I don't know. Thank you, Darwin. <laughs> I know. I know. Any other announcements? Well, if there are none, would you please rise as you are able and let us greet one another in the peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ.
This is exactly what I hoped for today, kind of like a big old family reunion, church family reunion. Good to, good to see it and everybody joyful today. Well, let us begin our worship today. We have our choir back, so let us join together in our choral and responsive call to worship. This is the day that leads into our opening song of praise, All Creatures of Our God and King. may be seated and please join me in the prayer holy God we have come from the north and south the east and west to worship you may you fill this space with your spirit in your presence may we find comfort and sorrow guidance and perplexity courage and temptation and strength to live as disciples of Jesus Christ our Lord through whom we pray. Amen. Will the children please come forward? Or young at heart, I keep forgetting that. <coughs> Good morning. How is everyone? How's school? Thumbs up? <coughs> <laughs> Whoa, girls are good, boys I'm not so sure about. <laughs> well, summer is over and you guys are back in school. I got back from vacation not too long ago. Did any of you go on vacation? <laughs> Why? Why not? We have to work. Oh, but we get time off work just like Alex will have all next week off. Maybe that's why school's not going so well for him. I don't know. I James, don't were you on vacation? Did you go on vacation this year? Um, yes, yes, I went on the Empire State and then my sister went with me. Ooh, very cool. But didn't you go on a big trip this summer? Uh, actually, yes, yes, we 
Montana. Did you go to Montana? Yeah. Well, it's nice to go on, and you guys went camping earlier in the year, didn't you? Yeah. Do you like to camp? I like to camp too. Oh, yeah, that's fun. So when you guys are gone on vacation, is it good to be home finally? It's good to go on vacation and see different things and have fun and go like crazy and do all you can do. But isn't it nice to come home? Yeah? Do you think it's nice to come home? What do you miss most about when you're on vacation? What do you miss most? from Nothing. Nothing? Okay. I love James, when you came home from your big trip from Montana, what did you miss most? Um, my cousins. Your cousins, okay. You know, sometimes when I was gone for a week, I came home and I thought, oh, I can finally sleep in my own bed and I can do the things I want to do. Even though I love going on vacation and love doing all sorts of things, it's always nice to come home to get in the routine of things, to get back to what I normally do, to unpack and not have to live out of a suitcase and sleep in my own bed. I don't think so. You don't think so? Okay. Well, it is nice, but it's always good to come home. Just like today we're celebrating coming home here at church. We've invited a bunch of people to come, to come home to their church because this is our church home, right? And it's nice to be home and nice to have vacations done and traveling done. And now it's time to get back into worshiping God every week. Like in the summer, sometimes we might take a week off or something. But it's nice to come home, to be back at church, and to see all of our friends at church and have a picnic and all of that fun stuff. When you go camping, um, you like to step in the mud. You like to and step in the mud. And then we have to wash off the dirty people's blood. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, it's more fun at camp, isn't it? Because you can, that mud squishes between your toes. Yeah, yeah. So and you can't do that at home and walk in the house, right? <laughs> like we have our little pipe with big pads to keep people in water, but our house does not have. You don't have freezing cold water at your house? <laughs> we, we have it in the fridge, but we have to like fill it up. Oh, we Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay, let's say a prayer, and then we'll go downstairs for our first week of regular fall Sunday school. Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us today, for letting us come home to your place of worship, our church. Thank you for all the people that are here, and thank you that we get into our regular routine and worship you on a regular basis. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning comes from Proverbs chapter 1, verses 20 through 33. You can follow along in your pew Bibles on pages 449 and 450. Listen for what the Spirit has to say to us this morning. Wisdom calls aloud in the street. She raises her voice in the public squares. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. In the gateways of the city, she makes her speech. How long will you simple ones love your simple ways? How long will you mockers delight in mockery and fools hate knowledge? If you had responded to my rebuke, I would have poured out my heart to you and made my thoughts known to you. But since you rejected me when I called and no one gave heed when I stretched out my hand, since you ignored all my advice and would not accept my rebuke, I in turn will laugh at your disaster. I will mock, mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when a disaster streaks over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me. Since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, since they would not accept my advice and spurn my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you join with me in prayer? May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Since we're officially a full week into the month of September, I'd like us all to imagine being back in school. Now, I know that for some of us, it's been a while since we've been in school, so it may, it may have to really dig into the recesses of your mind, but just, just play along with me, okay? We're in school, but we're not just in any school, okay? We're in a school that existed in ancient Egypt and maybe possibly in ancient Israel. The teachers in those schools were renowned sages. They were wise elders whose speech was filled with adages and maxims and proverbs. And the, the, teacher, the, the teacher's job was to share those proverbs, and the student's job was to learn of the feet of these wise elders. But if you were a student in such a school, what do you think the final exam would look like? Of course, no one is certain for sure, but a number of scholars have found evidence that exams in these kinds of schools might have involved the teacher just throwing out the first half of a proverb, and then the students are required then to complete the second half of the saying. Even today, I would guess that most of us this morning would do quite well on such an exam. For instance, I'm going to toss out some of these modern proverbs for you, and I want you to respond by finishing the second half, okay? Just shout it out loud, doesn't matter. Spare the rod. There you go, all right, one for one. When the going gets tough. All right, what goes up? A fool and his money. If you give a man an inch, Mm -hmm. The grass is always greener. With friends like that, people who live in glass houses. Wow, you aced that test, all right? All of them. Easy, right? <clears throat> Even today, I think we live off of proverbs and proverbial wisdom more than we may know or recognize on first level. 
The attaining of wisdom has been the goal of humanity, I think, since the dawn of time. In layman's terms, wisdom is the knack for getting along well in life's many and varied situations. And inherent in wisdom is a focus on the human experience. And then taking that human experience and reflecting upon it. And once one has gained these insights, they often share them with others, either through schools, like we talked about in the ancient world, or they wrote them down so that they could share them with the next several generations past them. Wisdom literature was quite common in the ancient world, including ancient Israel, and it was often framed as instructions that were passed from one king or one noble official to another to share the wisdom that they had gained during their reign or during their time in official office so that the next king or noble official could know some of the ins and outs of what they needed to do to fulfill their role. Wisdom literature could also be framed as advice about one's life that is shared from a parent to a child. Both of these frames, the king to the king or noble to noble or the parent to the child, are seen in the biblical book of Proverbs. But outside of these traditional aspects of ancient wisdom literature, a notable aspect of the book of Proverbs is a mysterious figure named Lady Wisdom. And she is the one who is speaking in our scripture text for today. The personification of wisdom, I think, was one way that the biblical writers sought to bring wisdom that they had, the wisdom that they wanted to share, to life, so to speak. And chapters 3 and 8 of Proverbs gives us a little bit of insight into the origins of Lady Wisdom. She is said to be a partner with God, and was even present at creation. However, she is not a goddess. Rather, she is presented as a mediator between God and humanity who enhances the theological value of the human experience and of human wisdom. And instead of being calmly introduced to the readers of Proverbs, kind of like, oh yeah, by the way, here is Lady Wisdom, she bursts onto the scene here in chapter one. She calls out, almost screams out to all who will listen. She wants everyone to heed her words. In verse 22, she decries those who have rejected her. And in this verse, she lists three specific kinds of people who have rejected her. The first is as she calls out, are the simple, or what she calls the simple. And the simple are ones who have outright chosen to remain ignorant. They could choose to learn, but they decide not to. The second Lady Wisdom calls out are the mockers. These are the ones who are arrogant and cynical. In a way they know, but yet they mock. And the third are the fools. The fools are the ones who refuse to act with good judgment. They know, but they choose not to act as they should. And yes, these descriptors are used in a derogatory way. All three of these types of people should know better, but they have chosen not to listen to wisdom. And throughout the next couple verses, Lady Wisdom rebukes them. A rebuke is designed to create a guilty conscience in a person with the hopes of helping that person come to a better understanding of why what they did was wrong. That was the first part, to help them understand why they did what was wrong, but then help them understand how they could do it better the next time. But despite all of Lady Wisdom's attempts, our text today makes clear that these ones who she calls simple and mockers and fools simply will not listen and outright reject her. 
Throughout the book of Proverbs, the wise sages of old believed that a rejection of wisdom was essentially the same as the rejection of God and of God's ways. This thought, I think, is expressed by Lady Wisdom in verse 29, when she says that the fools that she referenced earlier hated knowledge. They hate knowledge and they choose not to fear the Lord. Had they the proper insight, had they actually listened to wisdom, those who refuse Lady Wisdom's summons might anticipate that eventually, if they continue down the path that they are going, they will end up seeing and experiencing the results of their own stupidity, of their own foolishness. And in verse 26, Lady Wisdom says, yep, that is exactly what is going to happen. And when that inevitable disaster happens, she says, she will laugh at them and refuse to help them. Now that does sound a bit harsh, but I think it's important for us to note that neither Lady Wisdom nor God is at fault for this. It is the fool's own fault that they did not listen. And therefore, Lady Wisdom says they are simply eating their own just desserts. And I think this is exactly what she says in verse 31. They will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. But the good news is that this is not the end of our text. Lady Wisdom does end this passage on a hopeful note. In verse 33, she makes a promise to those who do choose to listen to her. Again, Lady Wisdom's plea is for us to listen and live a life of reverent awe of God. And out of our reverent awe of God, that will lead us down a path that will not have us fall into foolish and self-destructive behavior. And as Christians, we who have encountered the living God in Jesus Christ should know the depth and the rich treasures that are found in him. Deep down, I think each of us know, really I think the whole world on one level knows that the teachings and wisdom of Jesus do lead to a good and righteous life. But the key is to actually listen and obey them. The sages of ancient Israel suggest that those who do listen to wisdom's call will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. That's quite the promise. But maybe as skeptics, we kind of think, can that actually, or can that really be the case for us? Can we really live in safety and at ease and be without fear if we listen to wisdom? And at first thought, I'm not so sure. As I was thinking this week, I thought of what Jesus said in Mark's gospel when he spoke to his disciples along with those who were debating following him. They weren't quite sure. They were still on the fence. And he declares to them, quote, for those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. With these words of Jesus in mind, I'm not sure how we can live in security and ease and live a life without fear. It sounds like that's the exact opposite, what Jesus is saying. However, I do think as we live in the light of Christ's resurrection, I believe that the, the claims of Lady Wisdom and of Jesus 
are not at all contradictory. The Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Christians living in ancient Rome. He said that in any and all adversity, whatever we may face, he says that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's Romans 8, 37. And I think all of this put together, what Lady Wisdom said, what Jesus said, what the Apostle Paul said, I believe that on the strength of Christ's resurrection promise, that even in adversity, when we face the tough situations of life, I believe we can live out Lady Wisdom's claim and live without fear. Because in the spirit and in the name of the risen Christ, we can truly say, come what may. And we can say it without fear of what comes next. Because of what Christ has done. Especially his resurrection. And so I think the question before all of us this morning is this. Will we heed Lady Wisdom's call? While I know that our scripture passage was written centuries ago and this wisdom was shared centuries ago, I still wholeheartedly believe that we would do well to take seriously Lady Wisdom's words. Lest we find ourselves among the fools and adults who are walking a dangerous and self-destructive path. And I also believe as the people and followers of Jesus who claim him as Lord and Savior, who is, who is the wisdom of God incarnate, I think it would be very wise of us to listen. So, let's listen. Let us pray. Eternal God, who laid the world's foundations and created everything by your powerful word, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. As your people, we thank you for your divine guidance. We thank you especially for the teachings and wisdom of your son Jesus, whose lessons enlighten our path and lead us to righteous and abundant living. We ask that you help us listen to and obey his words in our everyday lives. God, as we seek to live in your wisdom, we ask for your help. We ask for your wisdom to discern your will within our lives. We ask for your wisdom to discern how to deal with others that we meet, that we live with, work with, shop with, drive on the road with, wait in line with, eat with, and be with daily. We ask for your wisdom in the difficult situations we may have to deal with as we go through our lives. God, we ask for your wisdom and you share it with our leaders in our world, in our country, in our state, and our community. As we prepare for the upcoming election in November, we ask for your wisdom as we vote. We ask for your lead wisdom for church leaders, both local and worldwide. We ask for your wisdom for pastors as they preach and teach your word, as they inspire and lead and grow your people as disciples of Jesus. We ask for your wisdom as all your people minister to those who are in need of care, for those in hospitals and in rehab centers, for those who are homebound and in nursing homes. God, we ask for your wisdom in how to care for those who are sick, who are in need of healing. We ask for your wisdom in comforting those who are mourning, we ask for your wisdom in helping those who are anxious and fearful. 
God, we also ask for your wisdom and how to pray for the things we, we can't say aloud. How to pray for things we don't even know how to pray for. And so we, so we ask that you help us trust in the work of the Holy Spirit who intercedes on our behalf. God, we lift all of these prayers to you and we ask for your wisdom daily that not only enlightens us, but transforms and guides us in our daily walk with Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we recognize all the gifts and wonderful things and blessings that God has given us in our lives, and we return some of those blessings to the work of Christ's church. Uh, in response to your giving, would you please rise as you are able and let us join together in the doxology. Would you please join with me in our prayer of dedication? O oh God, we bring our gifts to you. Help us give them with a ready mind, a willing spirit, and a joyful heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And as we prepare to gather around our Lord's table, let us join together in the hymn in remembrance.
I do want to remind all of you that as a congregation of the United Church of Christ, we do practice an open table where all Christians, all who seek to follow in Christ's way are welcome at this table. You do not, do not have to be a member of this church or any church to participate and eat the bread and drink the cup. I invite you at this time to take your insert and follow along and respond with the bolded words. My friends, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. In company with all who follow our Savior in every time and beyond time, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the vine. And so come, take your place at the table, and let us share this holy meal together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, our God and Father, creator and ruler of the universe. You alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light from before time and forever. O fountain of all life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. You honored us human beings with the breath of your life, making us in your image and likeness to care for the earth in stewardship and love. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we glorify your name and lift our voices in joyful praise. Truly we give you praise, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent him in whom your fullness dwells to be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Revealing your love, Jesus taught those who would hear him, healed those who believed in him, received all who sought him, and lifted the burden of their sin. We glorify you for your great power and love at work in Christ. Through his life, suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave life to your church, delivered us from sin and death, and made us a new people by water and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, bless you, and give thanks to you, O God Most High, now and forever. Amen. Whenever we gather around this table, we remember at his last supper, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup and said, this cup is is a new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Therefore, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith as signed and sealed in this holy meal. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon these your gifts of bread and cup, signs of the living Christ truly present among us. 
for all who receive these gifts in faith, make them food and drink of everlasting life until that day when all your people will be gathered from the ends of the earth into your eternal kingdom. Come then, for all is ready. The gifts of God for the people of God. At this time, I invite you to open the end of your chalice with the bread or the wafer. And as you take it, may you remember that this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. And as you open the other end with the juice, may you remember that this is the blood of Christ shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. In response to this holy meal, let us join together in our prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table with the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able and let us join together in our closing hymn, They Will Know We Are Christians By Our Love. And may that be our sending forth call to live in wisdom as we love and serve God and others in all that we do. And as you do so, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Again, please stay for, for bingo and picnic. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>